Today we're looking at not just one, but two vehicles in a side-by-side -side comparison. To my right, we have the British Daimler Dingo. To my left, we have the Canadian Ford Lynx. So the Dingo started off with a specification from the British War Office in 1938, where they wanted a new type of scout car. Out of the three companies that vied for this contract, BSA Cycles won out and started producing this vehicle in 1939. In all, production numbers at BSA came in at 6,626. So the Dingo Scout car entered service in 1940 and first saw action with the British Expeditionary Force. This vehicle was so popular that it remained in British service up to 1952, where it was later replaced by the Ferret Scout car. So there's four different marks of this vehicle. Mark 1 come out with a sliding canvas roof. When we go to Mark 1A and B, this now changed to a folding steel roof in two parts, so it would fold back. This roof weighed about 90 kilos. The only problem with this is if the vehicle was in an accident, the locking mechanism wasn't considered to be strong enough to hold this roof into place, so the roof could actually come forward and decapitate the crewman or give them a very nasty head wound. Mark 1 A and B has four wheel steering. The turn radius was classified to be around about seven meters. The only problem with that having four wheel steering for the unexperienced drivers, it could cause problems when maneuvering this vehicle at high speeds. So when we get into Mark 2, we now go from a four wheel steering to two wheel steering. This gives us a larger turn radius of about 11.58 meters. And we also see the introduction of the number 19 wireless set, which sits right behind the commander. When we go into Mark III, we see the removal of the roof. And because it is an open vehicle now, we see additional waterproofing of the ignition system. Being a wheeled vehicle, they can be vulnerable to small arms. So these are fitted with run flat tires. It does have an inner tube, but it also has a solid rubber mount that sits on the rim. It allows us to drive a lot further until we can get to a position where we can fix the tire because this vehicle does not carry a spare tire. So the engine fitted to the Dingo is the Daimler 2.5 litre inline six cylinder engine producing 55 horsepower and can propel this vehicle along at about 96 kilometres an hour. So the transmission on the Dingo is an interesting one. This is a five speed pre-select gearbox, five gears forward and five gears back. So we can drive just as fast in reverse as what we're going forwards. Now this runs off the H drive system. So from the engine, we have a fluid coupling goes into that five-speed pre-select gearbox, into a transfer case, from the transfer case into prop shafts, into a bevel box, and into the tractor joint. Because this vehicle is not fitted with a standard differential, we have a nice flat undercarriage, coupled with power to all four wheels. This gives us excellent cross-country mobility. 30 millimeters of armor protection on the front, and when we go to the sides, we're looking at anywhere between 10 to 12 millimeters. I'm sitting in the driver's position. So as I explained earlier, we have a pre-select gearbox. To change the gears, we don't have a conventional clutch pedal, we have a change pedal. So you can pre-select the gear, the gears will not change until you press the change pedal in and out. So in the back, we have an internal fuel tank that sits behind the driver just here. So this holds uh, 81 litres of fuel and will get us an operational range on road of about uh, 230 kilometres. During cold weather, if we're trying to start the vehicle, we can manually prime fuel into the carburetor. Behind the commander is the number 19 wireless set. This is the commander seat, so he can go up and down. He has 180 degree swivel of this seat, so he can turn to go to the radio set, and he can turn and operate the Bren machine gun. So silver boxes here, we can fit flares for the flare pistol, and then right in front of the commander, we have 25 magazines for the Bren 303. So the commander also has an additional seat up here. In the event of this vehicle rolling over, the vehicle is equipped with an escape hatch. This is the Lynx Scout car. Due to the high demand of the Daimler Dingo, Ford in Ontario, Canada, were given a license to produce their own variant of this vehicle. So the biggest difference between these two vehicles was the weight and the dimensions. The Dingo coming in at 2.64 tonne, the Lynx coming in at 3.9 tonnes. The Lynx is 50 centimetres longer and 27 centimetres higher. So first of all, they've done away with the H-Drive. So now we're on a four-wheel drive chassis. So we have differentials, four-speed gearbox, so four forward, one reverse, and high and low range. So the second change is instead of having an interior fuel tank like the Dingo, we have two external fuel tanks, one on either side. 
This holds about 120 litres, and this will give us roughly the same operational range of about 320 kilometres on road. So the suspension is drastically different. On the Dingo, we have a independent wishbone with coil springs. When we come over to the Lynx, we have leaf spring suspension with a shock absorber. So this gives us a much higher vehicle profile, even though it has the same armored body as the Dingo, now sits about 27 centimeters higher. The engine fitted to the Lynx is the 3.9 liter V8 flathead engine, commonly found in other Canadian military patent vehicles. It gave us more horsepower, but coupled with the different style of suspension, it wasn't considered to be as robust as the Dingo. Unlike the Dingo where we only had one hatch, on the Lynx, we have an escape hatch for both the driver and the commander. A little bit of uh, change within the interior. The main difference is obviously with a different type of gearbox, we just have the gear lever right in front of the uh, driver's foot. We don't have that fuel tank sitting right behind the driver, so it just gives us an extra bit of stowage for that radio system that we can have installed. So out of the 3,255 Lynxes made, Australia received 169, and these sort of started delivery about 1944. After a long service with the Australian Army, the Lynx went for disposal in 1956. So that was our quick comparison between the Dingo and the Lynx Scout cars. If you have a favourite vehicle or artillery piece, let us know in the comments. If we have it, we'll make a video of it.